Hi everybody, Jill here with my next video. It's Saturday morning. I have nothing planned to do today. I did some nice leisurely sketching this morning. So I'm hoping to do a uh, real-time detailed video using highlighters. I have done a little bit of highlighter art, mostly, of course, that I learned from Christy Sobolewski. She had a wonderful Markers Mayhem class. I don't think I ever took her class, the Markers Mayhem class, but she referenced it a lot in her live streams and demonstrated a lot. Maybe the other sprites who are watching will remember when we did this one. I believe it was one of Christy's live streams. But this technique that she taught was to put down gel medium and go over top with the highlighters. I'm not going to be doing exactly this today. I'm hoping to do something a little different. Um, this picture is dated here, 2016, April of 2016. Um, so that was several years ago. This one's dated July of 2017. This one I did just straight on can, uh, yeah, Canson watercolor paper. Um, this, when I was done, I was not happy with. It was a bit much. I used a reference picture from Pinterest, I believe. I think it was, uh, I couldn't venture to tell you what country the woman was from, but I loved her headdress and the flowers in her hair and her braid and her traditional clothing, so I used it as a reference. I had fun with it, and I can't remember, or I can't put my hands on anything else I've done with highlighters since, so I thought it was time to pull out the highlighters. So, let me show you, because I never do anything small. I get my mind wrapped around something and I decide, okay, now i got to have a bunch of highlighters. So this is my highlighter pouch. Um, for how rarely I've used them, it's really kind of sad that I have this many. Um, some of them are just regular, this is an old pencil pouch from like school days. Some of them are just regular office. These are highlighters you would use in an office. You get from Staples. Let's see that one, that one, this one. Okay, so you can do enough with those. Oh, look, my pit, big brush pen is in here. I should get that out. That's been hiding in there for a long time. So then this is a slightly better set of Bic Bright Liners. And these are nice. They have a, oops, they have a nice broad chisel tip. So they're good for covering large areas. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use those today. So what do I have for? Yellow, pink, green, and blue. Then I have Sharpie Neons, which, so let's see, there's four of these, five of these. You know, these are your typical Sharpie fine point. I don't know. I'm going to put those aside over here. Who knows if I'll use them or not. This is my favorite set. I love these. It gives you a really good range of colors. They're Sharpie liquid highlighters. They have a smaller chisel tip, but they give you a much better range of colors. See that? Put the pinks and purples together and the oranges and yellows. Look at the, the blues. Only one green. So this is what I'm going to be using the most of today. And I'm going to keep these out because, like I said, I might need a nice broad line. Now, I don't want to get too involved in the drawing today. I don't, I want it to be fun with markers. I don't want to worry too much. So I got this woman on Pinterest. Um, she is absolutely beautiful. I hope you can see it. I'm, my light... Let me turn this light off for a minute. My light always reflects in that. I want to use the set of her shoulders and her headdress and the way her scarf comes over her shoulder, but I'm not gonna replicate it exactly. It's just for the idea. Don't you love those apples in the background? I'm thinking, ooh, that might have to be a different work of art. I also don't want, she's got a beautiful tilt to her head. She's slightly tipped down. She's, you know, looking up. I, I don't wanna work that hard today. So I'm going to just kind of do my own face, but use this reference for the set of her shoulders and her, the idea of her headdress. So this will be over here. Uh, let's see. Let me take these off. And I'm going to start 
I don't have a, well, I've got a really big ruler. Let's see. I have not been making grid lines on faces lately, and I've been a little frustrated because all of a sudden my faces are so super crooked and wonky and the eyes and such. So let's, let's put a few grid lines on today. And, you know, I honestly don't know if I'm going to leave this full time. If this part I'm going to speed up and voice over, I don't know. I'll see as I go and I edit. Today I'm using my Strathmore, ooh, dragging my iPad across there and made marks, but look, they come off. My Strathmore watercolor journal, it's hard bound. The last one, for the last two months, you'll see that in my next journal flip, was the Strathmore Mixed Media, and it has a lot more pages. But when I went to Jerry's to buy it, when of course I waited to the last minute when I needed to start my new journal, they were out. So I got the Strathmore watercolor. The paper is wonderful. It's thick. There's a lot less pages, and I think I like that because I'll feel less pressured to fill the journal up within two months. I'll have some extra days, some days I don't have to work in this journal. I can do something different. But let me get back to what I'm doing here. Oh, um, so let's see. Let's, I don't want to do a lot of pencil. Most of the work's going to be with the highlighters. So all I'm doing here is I'm sketching in the basics of the face to make sure they're lined up. Oh, and already I'm probably too big because will I get her shoulders in there? I'm not sure. So, look, I don't know why I made my lines so dark, except that maybe you could see them better. So there is her mouth. And like I said, it's not this woman's face. This is just a generic face. So there's her eyes, the line above her eyes, her eyebrows. That's a big face. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen when you start, right? So let's bring her face down this way. Now, her neck. If she comes here... And off this way. You know what? Heh. This just goes to show you. Best laid plans. Already, I'm not... Well, maybe that's working out. This line of her neck. If I just get the basic angle, it'll all be fine. Let's stop that right there. This is that collarbone. Here's the center this comes down like this and this collarbone starts right there but we don't see much of it this is going to be her, sc oop, her scarf so now her scarf comes I can tell you right now I'm not liking how big her face is but remember this is fun this is fun play in my journal I'm not even sure how these highlighters are going to work on nice cold press watercolor paper. Let's bring it down a little more. So it's almost like her hair. Okay, I think that's good enough. I, I think I like this down here. And maybe a little bit of her shirt shows right there. The important part to me are these neck features. The collarbone, the neck. Now, okay, I can put the reference picture aside for now. Get rid of some of my guidelines here. But even though, you know, some of my pencil shows through, this is going to be a pretty loose picture, I hope, when I'm done. Okay, good enough? All right, so this is the way I start. And probably, yes, this is probably what Christy... Uh, I've got too many markers now. They're overwhelming me. Get those out of the way and keep just these. I don't know if they're in the picture or not, but let's start our lightest color. This is, if you've seen any of my videos, this is kind of the way I work with mermaid markers. Um, it's the way I work with a lot of different mediums, starting with, now, 
I'm going to create my own uh, light. What do you call that? <laughs> the direction of the light coming on the picture. And I'm going to have the light coming from here. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight where it hits her nose. I'm just working fast and loose. And I'm going to say it hits a little bit up here, her cheekbone. Hmm, definitely her upper lip. I, I, I don't know if I should put yellow in the mouth at all. Probably. That might have been a mistake. Who knows? We're going to go with the side of her chin. See the highlight? I'm making it up. I don't have a reference picture. But if the light were coming from this side, that's what it would be hitting. We're going to go with this strong line in her neck. This collarbone. This it definitely would hit this collarbone. A little bit right there. And I want to go... Like, if... How do I explain this? If I want this to be the highlight that's left, I want to go out further because there's going to be more colors added in layers. Um, I think, hmm, would she have any on this side at all? I'm not sure. Let's put a little, a little bit in here. Maybe a little bit on this cheek. I don't know if it would be hitting over there or not. Okay. Doesn't look like much yet, does it? <laughs> Let's think about her eyes. Do I want any yellow in her eyes? Probably not. I can wait. I can always add some yellow in this in places later. So now I'm going to go with my next. If I'm ignoring these four big ones, let's look at my colors I have here. So basically, we can count that out. That's a yellow. I have orange next, I have pink next, but I would like to save pink. I think what I'll do is I'll work evenly two sides. So the darkest shadows of her face would most likely be a blue or a purple. Purple is still kind of warm. These blues are cool, so I'm gonna take a cool color. Let's go with this darkest blue. Now this is a smaller chisel tip, so let's see how it goes. I'm going to start with some dark on this side of her face. And where it goes over the yellow, you're going to get some different colors. I'm going to start the darks in her eyes, and this line above her eyes. Um, she's just going to be looking straight forward. So let's put in that. Hmm. I'm sure I will bring out some black at the end. I'm not sure what. You never know. I might be able to layer the highlighters to where I don't need any black. And some nostrils. Now this side of her nose. The little notch above her mouth. I'm just going to put a little bit in the lip line because that's going to be mostly pinks. Okay. Now this is only going to be... I kind of already broke my own rule. <laughs> I should go lighter to darker, but right now I'm pretty much... Focusing on my darkest. Look, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm playing. And I encourage you to do this. Just play. See what happens. I'm sketching in some of these darks. I'm going to imagine a shadow like this under her. Okay, I left an awful lot of space between her eyes and her eyebrows. Put some darks in here. Hmm. 
even though this is the highlighted side, she's going to have some darks here. And where else? Okay, so let's go with, that was my purpley blue. Let's go with this slightly lighter blue. What I should have here, well, this, this might be a no-no. <laughs> this, I keep these in, um, like a portfolio of plastic pages. Um, I have many of them over the years. And I pulled it out today so it wouldn't be in plastic. So this is really wrong, isn't it, to use the back as a swatch? Okay, that is a nice light blue. Look at that. Compared to this blue. Compared to this purpley blue. So here's your three. Look at that. It's a nice three to use for shading, isn't it? Next time I will bring a scrap piece of paper to swatch on. So, do I do dark? Uh, all right, so that was the darkest. So let's now go with the next one. This is slightly brighter. I'm wondering, see now I'm second guessing myself. Should I do the lightest first? go back and add in the mid-tones. So there I have my darks and my lights. This side of her nose would pretty much be all shadowed, right? I hadn't intended on filling that cheek in completely, but there we go. It's done now. I'm probably going too fast with this on the textured paper. That's why it's leaving. I probably should slow down. It almost feels like it's drying out, but it's not. It's the textured paper. Okay. Okay. She definitely needs something more in here. I gotta leave more on this side for oranges and pinks. So let's see. Where else? It'd be a little bit dark back there. Well, not that dark, but cool. Okay, right now she's really blue. Let me go back and add this third color of blue. This side of the shadow under this side of the nose, I think I'm going to go back to the lighter blue. Okay. 
we definitely are going to need to get into some more skin colors here soon, some more <laughs> pinks and oranges, so she isn't so all blue. Now, this is where I have to make a decision. Do I work solely on her face and then add her scarf? Or do I do some of this at the same time? Let's just give her a... Give her some of that. I will add texture and design patterns in there later. I can decide what color her dress is going to be. So now, I am admit to feeling a little bit of nervousness now. I don't know where this is going. So now we need to put some oranges in the side of the face since we're going cool and warm. I'm afraid this might be a little too small of a point. Definitely not the Sharpie because that's a tiny point, but don't I have a big orange? I don't have a big orange highlighter. Isn't that funny? None of them are orange. I have pink, green, yellow. So this, this is it. This is my choice for orange. Let's see what happens. So, maybe I'll start with... We're getting really neon here. Carefully put a little in here. So that orange is going to go over top of some of those blues and now greens. I'm feeling a little nervous right now. I'm not sure how she's turning out, where she's going. I wonder, no, they don't really stay wet long enough to soften them a little bit. I'm gonna have to do more up here. I'm quiet. I'm hoping that this orange brings some of this back to a little bit more of a skin tone. We're getting a little muddy there in places. It's all right. Right now, I want to go back. The eyes are way too white right now. We will be working on that. Let's see. I'm really wishing I had a big orange highlighter right now.
And right now, it might be a little too drastic. I'm not sure. Let's Okay, I don't know. What do you think? Does it have some possibilities? Let's bring some. I can always go back later with a white paint pen, right? And add whatever I want. So, I don't know. What do you think? Do you hate it? It's interesting. Um, I believe in playing with as many different methods of shading a face as possible. I don't like how hard this edge, edge is here. I'm going to try. I don't know if everything's wet enough or there's just enough there that that blends a little with my finger. Okay. It seems to me the the Markers are creating a little bit of a base now, so let's bring this up a little. So they're not sinking directly into the paper so I can blend them a little. Okay, so what are we going to do with, I think I just made that too bright under her nose. <laughs> She's glowing under her nose. Let's go back to this dark. What are we going to do with her eyes and her mouth now? See, this is where I think I'm probably have to going to bring in some black. Just to make those pop. So... Her lips and her eyes. So we have a nice coat of this blue. But we need some shadows in her eyes. Now I haven't used... I gotta watch how much now is on my finger. I got a water jar over here. I'm trying to get some of that excess off my finger. Let's add a tiny bit of pink. It's harsh right now, but it will tone down. That's some pink. Wow. That's bright. <laughs> okay. What else can I do in her eyes for shading? There's no gray highlighter, huh? Let's go with some darker red in her lips. I want this to be kind of abstract. So right now I'm kind of okay her lips are too bright. Um, well, it's still wet. Let's see. That's okay. It's highlighter art after all, right? Some of this paper is now getting so saturated. I might be doing a little bit of damage. This is so thick, though. I'm pretty sure it would never come through the other side. This... This paper feels like cardboard thick. So, my big dilemma is her eyes, and I really don't know what to do. So, let me take a break from that and do her clothing. What are some colors? We have not used bright pink that much. Let's start with some bright pink. Oh, you know, it's bright but that's soft and pale it's not as intense we'll be going over it with some patterns and designs I'm sure maybe this is what I should use in some of her face huh okay 
So her dress is this color pink, so let's make one panel of her scarf this color pink. Make this one disappear right into there. And we'll bring it around on this side. Now, should I use some of this? I gotta watch that I don't just plain do, just plain too much in her face, you know? Like, Jill, enough, stop. Okay, Jill, stop. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to have a little bit of yellow in here. I'm supposed to be working on her scarf and there I go back to her face again but that's the way it goes right it's a flow now um, I keep going back to these markers because they have the biggest chisel tip I want her scarf to almost have a bit of a tie-dye look, I think. Let's see. More like a suggestion. Okay. I want her eyes to be green. Sometimes, did you see what I just did? I waited. I didn't know what to do with her eyes. I didn't know what to do with her eyes. And as I was working on the scarf, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I want green in her eyes. And that also worked for this shading because it mixed with some of those oranges. It made kind of a brown. The white spots in her eyes are not even, and right now I'm kind of liking that because I want this to be loose and painterly. I'm going to add a little bit more blue there. So what are you guys thinking? Have you ever done anything like this? Have you ever seen anybody else do anything like this? No. Nope. I got another color pink over there that got moved. Nope, too dark for there. But, ooh, it's a nice bright color for in here. And this will give me a nice edge against the side of her face. And this is where I start you know, second-guessing myself. Am I going too abstract in her scarf? Should I make her scarf? Because her face is all choppy lines, is now the whole thing going to be too much? I don't know. We won't know until the end. So I'm really liking this side. I don't know how far to carry it over to the other side. It's a little 
pattern texture marks. All right. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I guess I'll. That blue is just too light. Gonna have to go with this blue. Now I've gone way far away from the reference picture. It really was only the idea, right? Of how to set it up going over her shoulder. I like that bit of bright pink back there. I don't think I want to lose that. There's something, there's something wrong and bothering me right here in her upper lip, but I'm afraid to mess with it. I really am. I'm afraid by trying to fix it, I'm just going to make it worse. You know what it is? It's that blue. It's just too bright a blue. So what it probably needs is a light orange to make it more of a brown in there. Yep. See? Now it's not bothering me. It takes some courage. So let's... I think I already used that pink. Let's go with this red that I really only used in her lips so far and maybe over here. I'm quiet. I think I might be ready to take a little break here. I don't know. Maybe maybe I should film the whole thing in one shot. You'll really, really see real time. All right. I'll, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to keep going. Even though I'm running out of things to talk about, it, I feel like I should take a little break. I'm going to keep going. My last question will be, do I want to do anything in the background, or am I just going to leave her like this? I am not sure right now. She certainly has enough going, doesn't she? I want this to look like maybe it's some of the same fabric. I don't know why I have this white spot going here. I'll figure out what to put in there next. Let me take some of the blue. Just to bring enough down into her dress to match that. I think that's enough. I'm going to leave that right there. Really then now, all I have to do is finish this white spot on the top and get out a black marker to make some details pop. What am I going to do up there? I'm going to go... I don't think I was really fully intending to color this picture in solid. I, I had thought I would be leaving some white spaces. But right now, 
mo when I look up highlighter art on YouTube, I see a lot of very illustratory art where they start, like, it's almost more like anime or manga, where they draw the outlines in black and then they f solid fill in with highlighters. It's very illustrator looking. Right now, I'm trying to take these and force them into being painterly. Um, but that's fun. It's fun to try stuff like that. And, I, you know, you're going to get tired of hearing me saying this, probably. But this is my art journal. This is my place of play. I'm not going to try and sell this or frame it and hang it. Uh, and who knows where this will lead. Like, maybe I'm not thrilled with this. I'm not. It's interesting. And it certainly was fun. I'm sitting here debating whether I even turn this into a video or not. But all of that aside... It was fun. Look at look at the, the lighting on her face. Look at these collarbones, which I think are fabulous. Her chest skin doesn't look really great right there. But there's a lot about it I like, and there's a lot about it that could turn into something else. Let me reach and get my black sharp. I guess, oh, I bumped the camera a little. I'm so sorry. I wasn't sure what black marker I was gonna use at the very end. I hope it's, it feels a little damp. All that marker's a little bit wet. I'm going to take this and put it right in the pupils of her eyes because, oh, in a little bit. And a little bit in her eyebrow, just to make those eyes pop. See what that does. Nostrils. I don't know if I should put it in her lip line or not, but I just did. <laughs> this line under her chin, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> a lot of you were sitting there saying, yes, no, don't do it, yes, don't. I wish I could hear some of you right now. Do I make a black line under her chin to really bring it out my gut instinct says no let me sneak a little bit right here and see what it does well well maybe <laughs> oh gosh all right I like that this is a deep dark shadow here I like that do I keep going okay I can live with that it's funny it's making my Sharpie not want to work. It must be picking up. You know how Sharpies don't like working on anything wet? It must still be a little bit wet. Oh. A little sketch along there. Just a little. Uh, ah, I almost wish I hadn't. Oh, well. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right there. Let me know what you think. Does this have possibilities? Other places to go to, to experiment with this? Would you try it? Um, what do you think? You don't need as many Sharpies as I have, obviously. You could have a basic set of five. If anybody works in an office, you could probably do it just with your office highlighters. And uh, I do want to thank everybody so much for their support. I have gotten a whole lot of new subscribers. I'm up to 214 subscribers. To the artists who have 2,000 subscribers, that sounds like nothing. To me, that is amazing. If I put 214 people in my house right now, I would be overwhelmed with how many people are subscribed. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for every like, for every comment, for every view. Um, thank you. I don't have a long-term goal of what my future holds for art. I just know I love making art. I love sharing art. I love inspiring other people to make art. 
And right now, I'm not doing anything for money. Maybe someday when I retire from my full-time job, this will somehow turn into money-making. I don't know. But right now, I just wanted to share my appreciation for all of you out there that support and leave such nice comments. So, have a beautiful weekend. I will try and get this edited up as quickly as possible. And let me know what you think. See you in the next video.